back at it again and um we got an interesting one let's dive in g'day charlie um mate i'm, I'm g'day, not mate. from around today <laughs> uh i'm clearly not from around here mate so um but uh I, I must say, I, I do love the Australian accent. Do y'all like the, the Australian accent? I love that accent. Good day, mate. You know, I don't know. It just sounds so cool. It really does. Hey, Charlie. Plus, it reminds me of, um, uh, what was his name? Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter. I think it was Steve Irwin. The crocodile hunter, the guy that uh, unfortunately passed away due to the stingray situation. Like I told you guys, I, I used to watch the Animal Planet and like watch a bunch of videos on animals. I used to be like fascinated with that kind of stuff when I was a kid. So the Crocodile Hunter used to be um, one of my favorite people to watch when I was younger. So rest in peace. Rest in peace to a great gentleman. Um, mate, I'm, I'm Good day, not mate. from around. Good day, mate. Good day, mate. Uh, I'm clearly not from around here, mate. So, um, but uh, You're from a lockdown country. Oh, I am. I am. <laughs> I'm from the most locked down city in the world, actually. And um, so what I've found uh, traveling across, across this country is that there's a lot of Americans who are seduced by the ideas uh, that are perpetuated in Australia. A lot of, like, especially young Americans. Um, for any of you ha who haven't seen, like, what's happening in my country, it's pretty insane. Um, and I think that there's a massive equation between Western nations that we're all the same, especially with young people, and they and they look or they're sold this concept that you know you look to Europe for the future, look to Australia for the future. So I just wanted to know what would you say to young Americans about American exceptionalism and where you don't want to head in terms of uh, the future for America? It's a phenomenal question. Let me ask you a question first. Tell us how bad it actually is in Australia. Like, just tell us some examples of what's happening in your country. So I'll try not to go on a lot because, um, so like, I mean, I have a lot of mates who are really struggling right now. My mum's fled Victoria and uh, my sister, they've, they've left to go to Queensland. Victoria is basically where Melbourne is. It's the second largest city in Australia. And um, so it's basically the California of Australia. And uh, only, only like, seriously worse um, because Jeez. it's got really violent in terms of police uh, cracking down on protests and stuff like that. We don't have any freedom of speech in Australia enshrined in legislation. So, yeah, so it's um, it's so so my mum's really struggled uh, in terms of mentally and stuff like that because it's just um, yeah. Like and, and, there, and just to add more color to that, mandatory curfews, can't go outside a couple miles outside of your home. Those are all real things, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All because of... Like, very real. It's yeah. not, yeah. Because what, what you're hearing out of Australia is very, very real. I'm told by people this is not true and... Oh, nah. You got the accent to prove nah, people, it. So. People being arrested... <laughs> people being arrested for putting their trash cans out after curfew. Like, you can get onto YouTube and you'll have a ball on there. You'll just spend hours watching crazy stuff from Australia, so America's, not snakes. America's supposed to be different. And this is where I talk about America. Wow, people getting arrested for taking their trash out past curfew. Could you imagine that? Hey, yo, what'd you get arrested for? I took my trash out too late. Huh? What? And, th and this is what folks want us to le go towards. Zero freedom of speech. Don't get to say anything. The, the, the gentleman that we checked out uh, the other day, we don't care about your constitution. If that gets in our way, we'll tear it apart. We are going to do what it is that we want to do. That is what we are up against. That is that is wild. Politicians just coming out, flat out saying it. We don't care about your constitution. We don't care about your Supreme Court. American exceptionalism. The Anglosphere has differences, unfortunately. That Australia does not believe in natural rights the way the American project did. You just gave a great example. They do not have freedom of speech protected. Therefore, in Australia, the guys with the guns get to determine who gets to talk. In America, as we have an assault on freedom of speech, public expression, freedom of assembly, all of a sudden, we're gonna start heading in that direction. So what is the big difference between Australia and America? It comes down to our mission statement. It comes down, the mission statement of America is who's the sovereign, the people. Australia, they do not believe that. What, what else is the difference in America? We believe the states created the federal government. The federal government did not create the states. Australia is a centralized nation. We're one size fits all. We're going to tell you what to do. Mandatory edict. You do not question it. In America, we have liberty as a core value. We have a trinity in our country. In our country, 
There's a Christian trinity, Jesus the Son, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. There's an American trinity. It's on every coin. You guys should look at it every time you look at a piece of currency before they all go away, which is going to happen very soon, unfortunately. Liberty, in God we trust, and e pluribus unum. It's the American trinity. Australia believes in none of those things. I'm not accusing Australia. This is not part of their mission statement. Liberty, which means doing what you ought to do absent government or corporate interference. In God we trust, a transcendent order of a natural rights giver. E pluribus unum, Latin phrase, it means out of many one. We are one people, and the ruling class is not better than the sovereign. And what is the ramifications of that? Australia, because they were not founded on the same ideas, you know, that kind of history class that you might not take that seriously, the history that's under attack by the critical race theorists, because Australia does not have the same documents, the same mission statement, the same preservation of rights, yeah, when they get 200 COVID cases, they can march through the streets and start to arrest eight-year-olds because they're outside of curfew. And that's not an exaggeration. It's a real thing. So when I say an American exceptionalism, that means a recommitment to the American ideas that allow us even to be here tonight. If we had a gathering like this here in Australia, we would all be arrested for a very, very long time. Am I exaggerating with that? It's a very real Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. I was thinking that earlier. I was like, oh man, if this happened in Melbourne right now, it would be shut down hardcore. We have something special here in this country, everybody. Let's make sure we don't lose it. God bless you. Thank you for being here. We have something special in this country. Let's make sure we don't lose it. Great words to, to end that video right there. Um, and I think it is very important that we do exactly what he just said. We have to make sure that we don't lose it. We have something that is very special that a lot of other places on this planet do not have. And some of us are allowing it to slip and fall away. I've touched on this before, but I, when, whenever I see videos like this, I always go back to that KGB video of Yuri. Uh, I, I always forget his last name, but we're the last frontier. And I, I, I said this, and I'm going to continue to say this time and time again until it's drilled in people's heads. This is it. This is the last stand. Are you, you've seen what's happening with our neighbors to the north. Mr. Uh, Trudeau, we're going to freeze gun ownership. We're going to lock down everything. We've seen it. You heard it from an Australian right there. People are getting arrested for taking their trash out too late. What? There's nowhere else to run. There will be nowhere else to go. Once America falls, it's over. And we have some people at the wheel currently who want to take us there. We just watched a video on this the other day. Yesterday. The other day. I don't know recently just flat out telling us i mean th 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 this stuff is wild I, I i don't understand how more americans don't open their eyes and in, in my opinion and you guys can let me know how you feel about this in the comment section but at this point any american that does not believe in ho upholding the constitution i think should get a first class ticket to one of these other places first class ticket to canada first class ticket to australia go live there go live there and see how it really feels, what it's really like to live in the place that you want to take us to. See if you love it. Do y'all agree? Let me know in the comments. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's too harsh. I don't know. I, I'm, but I, I don't know of any other way to get it into some folks' heads. Like, this is not where you really want to go. It's not what you think it is. They're lying to you. They're telling you it's all sunshine and rainbows. They, of course. They can't sell you something where it's, it's this horrible nasty place nobody's gonna agree to that well i mean i'm sure some idiots might but for the most part most people are gonna agree to that it's easier to convince you to comply than it is to just force you to comply and i don't think there's any other there's any better way to convince folks than to allow them to see what the end of the road looks like but i don't know y'all let me know uh of any solutions you may have in the comment section i i totally 100 percent agree with charlie we have to protect this we have to but y'all let me know how y'all feeling in the comment section below like share comment and of course hit that subscribe button before you go peace and love i'm out